God. Let's go in our word verse, Matthew 5, 8. Ooh, 50,000 for, for heart. I'm just spit. I was drinking that. There. There. Tonight, I mean today, wow. It's already night time. Good night. <laughs> Yesterday I took a nap for three hours. Yeah, I went to bed when it was light outside and I woke up and it was dark. It was light in my room and then it was dark. I was like, what time is it? It was six. What time did you go to bed? Three. Oh, last night? Like 1230. Like normal. I thought I was going to like be up all night, but I wasn't. Anyways, thank you for sharing my life with me. This afternoon, this afternoon, we're talking about, we're going to continue or finish up, really, what we started on Wednesday about if I want to have the right soil, it's like a process. Remember, we looked at the M&Ms. They don't just all of a sudden end up in the bag. There's a process. Well, there's a process to keeping my heart clean, right? Because look what it says in Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart for what happens. They'll see God. They won't just see God like, oh, I saw God this morning in the sunrise. No, like you'll actually see God working in your life, his power in your finances, in your physical body, with your brother and sister, with your mom and dad. Like there won't be strife. You'll actually see God, but it matters how your heart is. What does your heart have to be if you're going to see God? It has to be pure. So how do I have a pure heart? How do I do this? And just like we've read multiple times, Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, not by power, but what? By his spirit. spirit. This is a spiritual thing. And we are spiritual people. So we started looking at this verse in your Bibles. Go to Matthew 13, 23. Matthew 13, 23. You're already in Matthew. So just go to 13, 23. We want to practice going through our Bible. Because if your phone dies and that's your Bible, then your Bible dies. You know what I mean? Nobody wants a dead Bible. We want our Bible, right? Does this ever die? Does it ever need to be charged? Thank the Lord. So have a Bible. Poseidon was giving out New Testaments. Thank you, Poseidon. He gave me one. EJ gave you one. It was so kind. A little pocket. A little... And Joseph... Yeah, he's just passing out Bibles. Thank you. I'm going to start calling you the... What are they called that stand at the schools? The Gideons. Just change your name to Gideon, Poseidon. You are Gideon. Matthew 13, 23, look what it says. He that receives seed into the good ground, say, that's me, good ground. ground. Is he that hears the word and what? Read the verse. Thank you. Hears the word and understands. So if I'm going to have a pure heart, I have to what? I have to hear and understand. Everyone say it. If I'm going to have a pure heart... Oh my gosh, I love y'all, but can, everybody means everybody. You don't have to be loud, just everyone say it. If I'm going to have a pure heart, then I have to hear and understand. I have to hear the word and understand. There's certain things that belong in my heart and other things, they just don't fit. There's certain things that belong in my life and other things, they just don't fit. That's going to be the title today is they just don't fit. They just don't fit. If I'm going to have a pure heart, there's things that do not fit in my heart. According to the verse we just read, if I'm going to have a good heart, I have to hear the word and understand the word. Well, how can I hear the word? What are some ways I can hear the word? Caden, are you smelling your armpit? Did it smell? Okay. What are some ways I can hear the word? Who can tell me? How can I hear the word? Zay? Zay? By listening it to it online. By listening to it online. What's another way to hear the word, Sierra? Going to church. Going to church. What's another way to hear the word? Or put my eyes on it. Listening to messages. Listening to messages. What's another way to hear the word, Riley? Um, do your Bible reading. Do your Bible reading, right? You can read out loud. Or you could just go over it. You can go over scripture. If I want to have a pure heart, just like the process. Titan, you have a different one? Reading your Bible. Reading your Bible. Yes, quiet time. If I'm going to have a pure heart, remember, it's a process. I have to hear the word. Say, I have to hear the word. If I don't hear the word, then other things are going to begin to creep in and fill my heart. And y'all, there's things that don't fit. In a child of God, there's things that don't fit in the heart of a child of God. There's a way to do things. If I want to have a pure heart, what do I have to do? Hear 
I have to hear the word and understand. Now, we didn't get to the understanding part. We know how to hear. In order for me to have a pure heart, what two things? What's the process? I have to hear and understand. So the understanding part involves who can guess who the understanding part involves. It involves me, the Holy Spirit. Good job. Let's go in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Good job. Hearts are fast. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12 is what we're going to read. Go to 9. If I want to have a pure heart, I have to hear and understand the word of God. It's a process. And when I know that, I have to guard against anything that is opposite of that. Did you hear me? When I know in order to have a pure heart, I have to hear the word and understand the word, I have to reject anything else. What's the only thing that should be filling my heart? The word, hearing the word, and then the Holy Spirit revealing the word to me. That's all that fits in my heart. As a child of God, that's all that fits. That's all that fits. Do you know what doesn't fit in your heart? Unforgiveness, strife, pride, insecurity, lies. They don't fit. We have to reject those things. It's just like this little toy. Have y'all ever played this when y'all were little? Y'all don't remember. Y'all don't remember. Makai, did you ever play this when you were little? Thank you. That was good because you knew I was going to ask your dad, huh? Did she ever play with one of these when she was little? Oh, she didn't. <laughs> okay, well, did anybody, has anybody ever seen this toy before? No. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> this isn't an ancient toy. I mean... Okay, so this is, I need actually a volunteer. I need some help. I mean, I'm super smart, but I need some help. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. pick a kid and then we'll go. Ryan. I was looking at her when I opened my eyes. You're the kid, so let's go. All right, look what it has right here. My heart was created to hold the word of God and then for the spirit of God to reveal it to me. Y'all see there's a circle. Let's say them together. Wow. Y'all did play this when you were little. I can tell. All right. So we've got here, we've got some shapes, Ryan. Now, if this was considered my heart, what are the things that belong in a heart of a believer? The word and, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit revealing the word to me. Everything else doesn't fit. If it's something else, I have to reject it. What about my own thoughts? Is that the word and my spirit? No. no. What about my feelings? No. no. What belongs in my heart? The word, the word and the spirit. The, the spirit of God revealing the word to me, showing me what it is, right? Listening. So this has very specific things. Only certain things could go in certain things. So show me. Could she try to cram this in here? Try, just, just try it. Yeah, just try it. Get it in there. Oh my gosh, just try it. Why isn't it going in? I don't, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. This is what believers do when they try to fit the wrong thing in their heart. What do you look? Oh dang, stupid. <laughs> you, look, you look foolish. Right? You look foolish. Now, put them where they go. Oh wow, that was flawless. Great job. Give it up for Ryan. She did exactly what fit. Now, if you try to put them somewhere else, are they going to go? Probably not. No, probably not. Why? Because we were created. Now, the circle looks a little bit smaller than the square, so that might. But, like, look, the square doesn't go in there. It doesn't fit. Does the triangle go in there? No. Does the triangle even go in the square? No, it only goes where? It only goes in the triangle. Y'all, like, unforgiveness, pride, insecurity, fear, it, it doesn't fit in my heart. So I have to reject it. If I'm going to keep the right soil, okay, if I'm going to produce the life that God created me to produce, then I have to keep my heart. Thank you so much, Ryan. You can take this to your seat. Just kidding. Give it to Jaslyn. Okay. <laughs> I don't know whose toy that is. It just automatically appeared up here. Let's read 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Look at the role of the Holy Spirit. See, if the Spirit of God doesn't tell you 
to do it, then guess what? Don't do it. Y'all, you have to keep your heart pure. And being involved in a bunch of stuff, watching a bunch of stuff, doing a bunch of things, what will that do to your heart? It'll harden it. It'll rot it. It'll cram it up with a bunch of stuff that is not right, right? Then you have like all of these weird shapes sticking out of your heart that don't belong. What belongs in my heart? The Word and the Holy Spirit. As I put the word in me, the Holy Spirit, look what he does, according to 1 Corinthians 9. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Everyone say, but God. But God. Has revealed them to us. He reveals his word by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit? We have received not the Spirit of the world. Say, that doesn't fit. The way the world does things, the way the world op operates, that doesn't fit in my heart. What fits in my heart? The word. the word of God and then the Holy Spirit revealing the word. What keeps my heart pure? If I hear the word and I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, I do only what he tells me to do. Only what's in the word. That's what I do. That's what I say. That's what I think. Why? Because if I'm going to have a pure heart, it matters what I hear and it matters that I understand the word of God for my life. And who reveals it to us? It says, we haven't received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know. Say, I might know. <laughs> See, I know what keeps my heart pure. Yeah. What is it? The word and then the Holy Spirit. He reveals to me. How many of y'all have ever been maybe listening to a message or just at church and it's like the Holy Spirit tells you something that you need to correct, something you need to change? Well, what do you choose to do? You choose to change it, right? Why? Because you want to keep your heart pure. If my heart's not pure, will I see God? No. no. Okay, two things. Heart, heart people, listen. Two things. What must I do to keep my heart pure? Have the word and have the Holy Spirit, right? Which both have been given to us. Do we have any excuse? No. To have a hard heart? No. To have a distracted heart? No. But here's the reason why so many believers don't have a pure heart. They're not hungry for it. You have to be hungry to have a pure heart. You have to be hungry. Do you understand? And you have to realize that whatever I'm hungry for, that's what's going to be filled up in me. And lies, deception, insecurity, it doesn't fit. I want you to take a picture, take a look at this video where this, it just didn't fit. It just did not fit. Take a look at this. Whoa! He's a rare! He's a rare! A doop-doop! A ram doop! And a flipper! Gotta get that G, quick! A doop-doop! G, G, quick, quick! Oh, mother! Mother! He's here! He's here! The rare doop! Oh, do I look all right? I'm so excited, I just don't know what I'll do! Now remember, this is your last chance. Don't fail me. Announcing his imperial grace, the Grand Duke. You honor our humble uh, old lord. Uh, quite so. May I present my daughters, Drizella, Anastasia. Your grace. Well, there's a child, I'm sure. His grace will read a royal proclamation. <coughs> All loyal subjects of his imperial majesty are hereby notified by royal proclamation in regard to a certain class. <sighs> Simple. It is upon this day decree. Why, that's my slipper. <gasps> well, I like that. It, it's my slipper. No, no, no. Slenderelli slipper. Slenderelli. How can she stand there and deliver these girls? Girls. Your manners. Thousand pardons, Your Grace. Please continue. Yes, quite so. Uh, 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 oh, yes. It, it is upon this day decreed that a quest be instituted throughout the length and breadth of our domain. The sole and express purpose of said quest to be as follows to wit. <laughs> that every single maiden in our beloved kingdom, without privilege or exception, shall try upon her foot this aforementioned slipper of glass, and should one be found upon whose foot says slipper shall properly fit her. Uh -huh. 
such such, such maiden shall be acclaimed the object of this search, and immediately forthwith shall be looked upon as the one and only true love of his royal highness, our beloved son and heir. Oh, the noble prince. <laughs> Said noble prince will humbly upon bed and knee beg, request, or if need be, implore said maiden to daily grant her hand in marriage. <laughs> Whereupon, should the aforementioned maiden look with favor upon his suit, then shall the happy couple pledge their troth. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and in due course, upon the inevitable demise of his most gracious and august majesty, the king, <clears throat> succeed to the throne there to rule over all the land as king and queen of our beloved kingdom. <clears throat> so be it. Oh. <clears throat> You must be quite fatigued, Your Grace. May we offer you some tea? What? Tea? <laughs> Thank you, madam. No. Uh, we must proceed with the, uh, the fitting. Of course. Anastasia, dear. <laughs> there. I knew it was my slipper. Oh, it's exactly my size. I always wear the same size. As soon as I saw it, I said, Oh. Well, uh, it, it may be a trifle snug today. You know how it is, dancing all night. I can't understand why. It's always fit perfectly before. I don't think you're half trying. Mother, can you? Shh. Quiet, my dear. We mustn't disturb his grace. Young man, are you sure you're trying it on the right foot? <laughs> oh, it's the right foot, but it must have shrunk to something. This glass, you know, isn't always reliable. Come on, Gus, Gus, flurry. Up the stairs, up the stairs. Young lady, please. Here, Dad, Gus. Here, Dad. Look, quick, quick. Gotta hurry. There was only one foot, obviously, that that slipper was going to fit, right? And that was Cinderella. Cinderella, right? But what did that sister try to do? Make it fit, right? My own plan for my life, it doesn't fit. Lies, they don't fit. Disobedience, they don't fit. Do you know what's going to make my life complete? What's going to make my life produce the most is having a pure heart. How do I have a pure heart? What do I do? What do I have to do? I have to hear the word and I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I can't try to cram my opinions into my life. I can't try to cram even what other people say about me into my life. What is the only thing that fits the life of a believer? The word and the Holy Spirit. He's going to show me what the word means for my life. And look, this is how I do it. Go in your Bibles to Matthew 5. I'm going to close with this. Matthew 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, verse 6. Look what it says. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. If I constantly try to do my own thing, if I try to make my own way, I'll always come up empty. But whenever I say, God, I want to have a pure heart, I want that more than anything. Isn't that what Paul said? Paul said that I might know Christ and the power of his resurrection. What was Paul saying? I just want to know his word. I want to know what the spirit of God has to say. Why? Because when I know that, what happens? I'm going to see God. I'll be filled up. My heart will be pure. I don't just get a pure heart by coming to church. That's a step, right? Hearing the word. But what do I have to do with the word I hear? I have to use it. I have to do something with it. So I want to encourage you this week. I want you to look at the things you're involved in, the stuff you're filling your heart with. Maybe it's a wrong thought that you've just been thinking about yourself, or maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's just like laziness, carnality. Maybe there's some things that you're watching you know you're not supposed to watch, whatever it is. I want you to begin to look at those things. You can even write it down. Like lies don't fit. Unforgiveness doesn't fit. What's the only thing that fits in your heart? 
the word and the Holy Spirit. And whenever you fill your heart with the word, when you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the word to you, what's going to happen according to Matthew 5, 8? You have a pure heart and what happens? You shall see God. But whose job is it to keep your heart pure? It's yours. Yeah.